Right, so let's go ahead and actually uh, set our API up or, or our connection to the PayPal API up rather. So just under here then, I'm going to require in the uh, auto load file from Composer. So here I'm just going to say DIR and append on going back one directory into vendor and then autoload.php. This is just basically going to pull in all of our composer dependencies so we can use any of them basically. So here then we need to uh, actually create a new instance of API context passing in our credentials. This is fairly straightforward but everything within the PayPal SDK is actually namespaced. So what we would usually do is we would say API equals new API context like so and then we would pass in a new instance of OAuth token credential but this is namespaced under PayPal rest this object here. So up the top, we need to go ahead and use these namespaces. So basically import these. Now this is important because we're working very procedurally and we're not doing things how you would actually probably do in a real life application. It's very messy. But in reality, if you are working within a, a framework or you're working within a really nice structure, this would make a lot more sense. So let's go ahead and use PayPal REST API context you'll see this a lot because we need to do this uh, for the actual payment journey uh, a lot so now we can access this uh, here and within this we need to pass in a new OAuth token credential instance so in this case uh, this takes two arguments the first is going to be the uh, client ID and the second is going to be our secret so obviously we have these here, client ID and secret. So let's copy and paste these in. So let's grab our client ID, paste that into here. And let's grab our secret and let's paste that into there. Now OAuth token credential is also namespaced. So let's go ahead and just say use PayPal. This time it's namespaced under PayPal auth and OAuth token credential. So we need to import that as well. So let's just refresh this page just to make sure we've not done anything wrong. It looks good, we don't see any errors. So these uh, have obviously been found. Now what we want to do is actually set up the configuration. So we say API and we have a set config method which takes an array. And this is an array of details like the mode, uh, whether you want to enable logging, the logging file name, the logging level. So you don't have to specify all this, but I'll do so anyway, just in case you need to use it. So the mode here is gonna be sandbox. That's really important. We don't want to make calls to the live API. Uh, we're only using PayPal sandbox. Now we also have a connection timeout. And this, I'm just gonna say 30. This can be any value. You can tweak it if you need to. Now we're gonna say log dot log enabled. Now I'm actually gonna set this to false because I don't want the files to be created. But if you are having problems with this, checking the logs is a really good way to actually figure out what might have gone wrong. So if you do have any problems or, or, or anything like that, go ahead and enable this. And obviously you're going to need to store this in a particular file. In this case, it's just gonna be an empty string, but choose a file name to log this to and you can check them logs. We can also choose a log level. This can be a couple of values, but fine is probably good. And we also have a validation level here. And that's going to be log. So we've now set up the config that we need. This is obviously really important. So now when we refresh, oops, we've got a little error here. So ah, there we go. So we're done. So that's all we need to be able to actually use the PayPal uh, API. We've got everything set up. So in any files that we create, so for example, actually setting up how much to charge the user, 
we can now reference this API variable here. So that is the PayPal API connection set up. We can now get on to actually starting the initial payment process.